So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome everyone, wherever you are joining us from, whatever time of day it might be where you are. Thank you for joining us today. This is a day that's very meaningful for me personally, and I'm sure it is also to you as you've chosen to spend your time with us today. Before we get started, uh, I'm gonna go over a couple of housekeeping notes. Feel free to use the chat function to um, chat with your peers, to introduce yourself. Um, if you're using um, Zoom on a computer, you might have a little drop down at your, at your chat that says you can either talk to everyone or just to the host and panelists. So please feel free to talk to everyone um, throughout uh, the event, that's your space. If you require closed captioning, there is auto-generated closed captioning. So Zoom uh, creates the closed captioning. You can find it by uh, either clicking the button on your screen that says CC, or if you don't see it, click more, the dot, 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 more, and you'll see captions. Uh, our session will be um, primary, primarily in uh, English today. We do have one speaker um, with some translation into English. Um, so your transcriptions will come up in English as well. We are recording the session today. Um, if for some reason you um, join us and have to drop out, we'll, we'll make sure that you get a recording. And last but not least, um, if you have questions, we're going to have a really, um, we're, we're saving a good amount of time for Q&A uh, today with our fabulous speakers, because we know you're going to have um, some questions and some feedback. So if you could use the, the section that says Q&A, that helps us keep all the questions organized so they don't get lost in the chat. And if you have any trouble using that section, feel free to throw your question in the chat. But if you're able to use that Q&A, that helps us a lot. Um, great. Okay, so to get us started today, I'd like to first acknowledge the land that I and many of us here at Cody Institute are joining you from today. So Cody Institute and St. Evex University stand on the lands of Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded home of the Mi'kmaq. We express our deep gratitude and appreciation to the generations of Mi'kmaq who since time immemorial have loved and stewarded these lands and the beings who call them home. While we strive to decolonize ourselves and our institution, we know there is still much for us to learn. We are committed to doing the hard work of self-reflection and to repairing relationships with the Mi'kmaq on whose lands we reside, including embracing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action and embodying their spirit in our day-to-day -day lives. In Canada, we are all treaty people. Colonization is not just history, it exists in the present tense. While we meet on this virtual platform, it remains important to acknowledge the lands on which we all live, wherever we hail from. We acknowledge this land not only in recognition to indigenous communities who have held relationship with it for generations, but also in recognition of the historical and ongoing legacy of colonialism in Canada and around the world. We are so grateful to be joined by each of you today Again, please use the chat feature. Let us know uh, who you are, where you're joining us from. And as we begin our event, I invite you to reflect on the past, the present, and the future of where you call home. And happy International Women's Day. Today, of course, is International Women's Day. It's a global day to recognize and celebrate women's and girls' social, economic, cultural and political achievements. It's a time to raise awareness of the progress made towards achieving gender equality. It's an opportunity to learn, reflect and advocate as there's still so much more to be done. This year's theme by Women and Gender Equality Canada is Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. And today we're going to speak with fabulous women leaders from five different organizations in five different countries who are investing in women through social and economic empowerment and participation. These women are leaders and members of partner organizations from Engage, Women's Empowerment and Active Citizenship. And I'm going to ask Eric Smith, who's the project manager for Engage, to briefly give us some context about this work. Eric? 
Uh, thanks so much, Jenny. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, to everyone who's joined us today. On uh, behalf of the Engage Project and our partners, Clay and Haiti, CCDB in Bangladesh, TGNP in Tanzania, Sewa in India, uh, and WISE in Ethiopia, very warm welcome to you all. Thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, I'm honored to introduce the Engage Project on International Women's Day. Um, I'm not going to introduce each of the colleagues and dear friends who are your panelists or their organizations. I couldn't do them justice if I tried, and they can introduce themselves quite well. Uh, one way or another, I think you're in for a real treat today. I'll instead share a bit about how we've invested in one another uh, through the Engage project and what makes this project a little bit unique in my mind. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the support of Global Affairs Canada. Uh, Engage is an initiative funded by Global Affairs Canada, and we're grateful for their investment in women and their recognition that asset-based and feminist approaches and projects require flexibility and consistency in their implementation. <clears throat> so at the beginning of the project, very few of us you know, knew each other very well. Um, there were lots of new connections to make though there were some really long-standing and deep connections between a few of us. Uh, we've since been through a lot. Uh, COVID, earthquakes, cyclones, political conflicts, uh, and turmoil, and more as we've worked over the last four years. Uh, we've also had lots of laughs. We've shared lots of experiences, long trips in the car together, uh, one or two flights. We welcomed each other into our communities and our homes and I think built some incredible social capital across this, this unique consortium as we work to advance gender equality. Um, while some of us might have been new to each other individually, our organizations have often been working together for a long time. In the case of SEWA, over 40 years, CCDB, uh, 45, and WISE was actually modeled off of SEWA uh, starting in the early 1990s. So, the partnership that we have is itself a reflection of long-term sustainability and builds on social capital gained over many decades of collaboration. And that collaboration will continue after the project is over. Um, you know, flexibility, understanding, mutual, mutual trust, respect, transparency, and power sharing. I think these are how Cody approaches partnerships and are the ideals that, that we as partners strive to live up to. At the heart of Cody, of the work that Cody does, of the, of the work that Engage does, of all community development is, is social capital and a shared vision of a world where, where everyone, regardless of gender, caste or creed, are free to pursue a full and abundant life. So within Engage, we have invested in each other and in the communities we work with. We've started with the existing talents, skills and strengths that women in those communities already have, but may not recognize. There are leadership programs to help them realize their potential and act on it. Um, we've helped them identify tools, strategies, so they can engage with men and boys, power brokers and officials, and advocate for their own priorities and those of their families. We've also focused on helping each other as organizations and as colleagues. Each organization brings its own unique strengths to the partnership and has, scared, and has shared its knowledge and skills freely with, with the others. This has enabled us to invest more effectively in women's leadership and active citizenship because we're sharing the best from one context, putting it through each organizational lens, and then adapting and applying it in another context. You'll hear a few of those stories today. We've also taken a whole of organization approach and tried to ensure as much cross fertilization of ideas as possible so that we can shake up and agitate whole systems for positive change. Last night, I was going through uh, evaluation data uh, in preparation for annual reporting. Reporting is not always the most fun, um, but the light shines through when I come across stories that inspire. And there are and have been many such stories. So I'd like to share a quotation from a recent graduate and staff member of an engaged partner. I won't say her name because I haven't received permission from her yet, but the story is representative of some of the changes we're seeing and what we'll hear today. This story is significant to me because most importantly, mindsets are changing at individual, community, and village levels. 
The women who had no identity are now being consulted for their opinions by the male members of their family. Some of these women are also being invited to community and village level meetings by local authorities for cascading information or implementing schemes. They have found their identity, self-respect, respect from family and respect from peers and respect from village authorities through their association with Cody's Engage program. The learnings at the Feminist Advocacy for Gender Justice course have further enhanced the outlook of women who are now boldly moving ahead in all spheres of their life. So in a nutshell, um, we've tried to invest to unlock women's leadership, their social capital, and their active participation in government decision making. Throughout, and I think most importantly, we've tried to invest in each other. It hasn't always been easy, but nothing worth having comes without a fight. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to hearing from our panelists, and I'm sure you are too. Please enjoy the conversation and thank you all for your efforts for advancing gender equality and women's leadership. Thank you so much, Eric. That is um, a great summary of not only um, the work, but the, you know, building of communities, you know, in the context of where we are, but communities with each other, with with many of the people who are on this call, and uh, the relationships that kind of form the foundation of the work and the project. Um, and what a powerful testimonial. So thank you so much for sharing that. So I have asked our panelists today not to prepare slides or presentations as we want to engage with them in conversation and allow the space for sharing and learning organically, um, which you, uh, all of you attending are going to uh, have the opportunity to do as well um, in our Q&A if you would like to participate in that. I'm going to ask each of our guests to give us a very brief introduction of who they are, where they're joining from and what kind of work their organization is leading before we dive deeper into some question, uh, questions about today's theme, uh, invest in women. And so I am going to, uh, I'm going to start with the person geographically closest to me, uh, Lucia. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much to my friends and colleagues from the Engage uh, project and from all around the world. Thank you to Eric and to Brian. My name is Lucia Dupoy. I am the director of the Haitian Center for Leadership and Excellence, CLE. Um, we are not one of the longest standing partners um, in the Engage program. We're the youngest partner, in fact. And we were founded in 2011 in very close partnership with the Cody International Institute in, in, in many ways, a model of the uh, system level work that Cody is uh, pushing in terms of supporting a bottom-up and ABCD um, approach to uh, building power and building strength, capacity, and strategy from the bottom-up um, in Haiti. We launched in 2011 as a leadership development institute, recognizing that the, the capacity, the potential, and the vibrancy of youth, women, and rural leaders in Haiti was untapped. And we set out to create an ecosystem to help leaders leading innovative bottom-up investments to solve uh, the challenges that they face with their own resources, with their own hands, with their own priorities, with their own collective mobilization, and with their own power. And so through training uh, programs, through field building, advocacy, and research, we have now trained over 5,000 uh, young leaders. 60% uh, women across the entire country. And we are focusing on changing the paradigm of top-down dependency to one that can thrive and one that can actually uh, represent the communities and provide them with the economic success that they, that they deserve across Haiti. Wow, and I will give a lot more detail on the Engage Project and Path to Jen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we are going to hear um... Uh, some some deeper um, thoughts and reflections. Um, but we want to make sure that all of you who are new to us know who these fabulous folks on our screen uh, are. And so next, I'm going to throw to the person uh, in the furthest time zone from me, um, who's in the late PM of their evening, Farida. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. And hello, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Farida. I'm working at CCDB, which stands for Christian Commission for Development. Uh, it is in Bangladesh. Dhaka is the head office of CCDB. And uh, CCDB is working in national level. So many districts we are working in Bangladesh. Our um, uh, CCDB ambitions for a just and caring society. So we have a few flagship programs and among the bilateral programs, Engage is one of them. So we are uh, we are working on uh, CCDB is working towards like um, relief or disaster addressing the emergency needs, some <clears throat> poverty reduction programs, some climate change actions. So among those, Engage stands for uh, for community leadership of women. Uh, we are working in southern part of Bangladesh and uh, two parts of Bangladesh. Uh, one is called Shamnagar Shatkira, another is Paturvata Borguna. And uh, as Eric has said, the True Engage project, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, strengthening the capacity of women leadership, advance the gender equality by enhancing women capacity so that they can participate in the social and economical life of their communities. So Engage is focusing uh, the community of women leadership and for ensuring the leadership so women can come forward and take lead uh, leadership in the community development. We have some activities. Uh, so uh, it started in 2021, end of the year because of COVID we couldn't start. But um, uh, through these two years, I can say, that women are coming up, they are being so active and they're taking leads in the community and um, further opportunities. Uh, I can share the stories that they got, they have received and um, they inspire us. The community people are inspired by those women who are coming forward and taking lead in the community. And um, Thank you for this uh, scope. And I think, um, uh, Jenny, we will be getting opportunity to share our story later on. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. And we can't wait to hear about some of those things that you kind of hinted at and some of the, the stories of, of success that you're seeing. So we'll get we'll get into some of those uh, in a few moments. Um, I am going to uh, go to the person who is next on my screen, which is Aster. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Aster. I work for Organization for Women in Self-Employment, or shortly known as WISE in Ethiopia. I am the Engage Project Manager. Uh, when we talk of WISE, uh, WISE has been working for the last 26 plus years uh, with low uh, income women and girls, particularly to empower them economically and socially. Uh, more or less, WISE works uh, with low income women to become uh, resilient, to develop uh, their families and enjoy equal rights and become active players in, in the development process. When you talk of WISE, WISE has three entities in it. WISE has an, an NGO, and WISE has a social enterprise known as Malekat. And uh, WISE organizes uni, uh, has uh, SACOS, and the, an, the an umbrella organization of the SACOS is known as the union. Therefore, the union, the social enterprise, Malekat, and uh, the NGOs. The, it is these three things which makes the three entities of, uh, in general, what we call WISE. Uh, its program strategies are more or less on training and uh, especially training and business development. Since uh, the women are very low income economically, uh, we felt that changing the mindset is an important aspect so that we have so many consecutive trainings to the women, which are organized more or less in circles. Every time, uh, WISE organizes uh, women in saving and credit cooperative. That means the second one uh, core program area is organizing and institutional development. They are encouraged to uh, have their own develop their own institution, to have a collective voice, to have a, an agency as an institution. Therefore, it, 
It means it is a saving and credit cooperative. And then after that, uh, we create a platform to sharing uh, ideas, dialogues, forum, lessons, sharing events. This is not only to women, but to the family members, to the stakeholders working closer uh, around the women, because we, we believe that it's not uh, just to solve the problem of women, uh, people around them like that of the important stakeholders and their families has to be equipped with the necessary uh, knowledge and information. So we create platforms to have a discussion forums and dialogues. And uh, the other important thing is partnership and uh, learning. This is uh, the, the other core strategic area. We believe in, in partnership, even though the engage has its own partners. We work also with uh, national partners and we are able to share our learnings uh, from each other. Most of the time as a uh, national level, the partnership is and learning is through provision of uh, training of trainees and uh, expanding outreach, not only in Addis Ababa, but to the other administrative uh, regions. Actually, uh, why it start, started its work in Addis Ababa, uh, however, uh, beside Addis Ababa, uh, we are working. We can I can say that Wise is working uh, throughout uh, uh, Ethiopia through its partners. It has diverse government, non-government organization uh, organizations who are working closely so that Wise's experiences, learnings, tools, and approaches are shared throughout the country. Besides that, Wise is uh, currently working not only in Addis Ababa. Uh, it's work, uh, it works uh, uh, to, in two other uh, administrative regions with uh, branch offices. When, uh, when I talk of the achievements, we are able to have a sustainable institutions. You know, uh, we do have saving and credit cooperative that are more than 25 years old. That means uh, having more than 500, 600 uh, members in, in each end. They are capable of, uh, you know, providing loans to their members more than half a million uh, per, uh, uh, to, uh, the, to their members. Uh, that means these circles are sustainable, whether WISE is available or not, they can work independently, provide loans to their members, train their members uh, as well. This is one of uh, the achievements, developing sustainable institutions, which can work independently, even in the absence of WISE. Uh, Besides uh, these uh, institutions, uh, we do have a very strong, numerous, self-empowered self women who are capable of supporting their family, who are capable of educating their, ch their children, especially, uh, to go out of the vicious cycle of poverty. The women are very strong in inv and invest uh, in the education of children. So uh, there are so many graduates who are also capable of coming and supporting uh, WISE. And uh, I, I could say that, you know, economically, some of, I could say most, most of the women are much better economically than the staff. There's, uh, we do have women uh, millionaire who have, we, uh, who invest to have a, a bigger hotels, to have a four or five ride, who, who have, you know, garment factories like that. And, that means a lot has been invested on the woman to reach into this level. That uh, beyond that, uh, they are capable of uh, also hiring uh, other women, including their husband. They hire some of them uh, hire their husbands as well. And the other thing is, uh, you know, more or less, you know, uh, uh, the collective voices coming now. Whenever they face a challenge, the women starts to work together and. Uh, you know, they can uh, amplify their voice collectively. This is one uh, important thing. When you talk of, you know, engage, as has been said by the, by others, because of COVID and others, uh, constraints, especially in our case, because of uh, this uh, local uh, challenges and wars, even if the program is in, in Addis Ababa and uh, the war doesn't affect us psychologically, it affects our, our women. More or less, uh, this uh, Engage project helps us to strive uh, for the right fulfillment. It enables women to strive for uh, right fulfillment 
and to know their res responsibility as well, so that the woman as a, a citizen, uh, they should play active uh, part in the development uh, process. Uh, and really uh, very interesting things are uh, coming out when it's, uh, in dealing with uh, fighting poverty and as well as in dealing with the collective voice. Thank you so much. Wow, Aster, thank you. Thank you for, um, it's very difficult to uh, distill all of the many, 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 many things that all of your organizations are doing into uh, into only a couple of minutes. And uh, because there is um, so much that you can't, you know, pack into <laughs> an hour. And that was a really, really great overview. And, and I'm very grateful to have been able to visit WISE last year and and meet some of the women and even shop with, uh, you know, in, in your beautiful um, shop where your uh, uh, women members have their uh, their wares. Absolutely wonderful place to be. Um, next, I'm going to go to Rahema. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, you and TGNP? Okay, um, good evening everyone. Um, I'm Rehema Mateba speaking from TGNP, which stands for Tanzania Gender Networking Program. Um, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear and see you. Thank you, Rehema. Okay, thank you. That's good. Um, um, TGNP has a, a vision of seeing the Tanzanian society free from gender inequality, from uh, does not have any gaps in uh, gender equality issues also. Um, the organization aspires to see uh, a society where um, social justice prevails. So it's a, it's a huge task ahead of us. The organization started in 1993. Uh, we just turned 30 years uh, last year. So we had a big celebration to celebrate 30 years. And um, what what actually have we done over the past 30 years? Um, of course, we have been trying different things, um, trying on and off, but overall, we have been uh, engaged in uh, mindset and behavior transformation so that, um, the people are able to uh, set agenda. And we have invested a lot in uh, encouraging inclusive participation and decision making. So um, to get uh, this work going or to get uh, this work in progress, TGNP um, works with a number of, uh, I call them constituencies, a number of people. We work with the government hierarchy from the grassroots all the way to the parliament level. We work with like-minded CSOs to amplify voices in, in, in groups or in, in, in big groups or in twos or three, depending on availa availability of funding. We also work with political parties so that they carry the agenda in their uh, political aspirations. They carry the agenda of uh, women involvement in gender equality. We work with institutions of higher learning so that the upcoming academ academics, both men and women who are the future leaders, 
by the time they get into the government structure or in CSOs, already they have had a, a dose of uh, gender equality. We work with religious institutions of all caliber, you know, of course with the leader, so that in their day-to-day -day religious teachings, they also inject gender equality messages. Um, we work with school children, both at the primary and secondary school level through gender clubs, and sometimes through engaging um, teachers. And we work with uh, men and women of all ages in communities where they live through knowledge centers. We have also tried to engage the elderly uh, over 60 years old because they have some uh, uh, special uh, problems of um, are not being uh, included in mainstream development, especially with regards to healthcare, because as one gets old, so the organs degenerate and uh, uh, special healthcare um, needs arise. Also, we work with people with disabilities, disabilities of all kinds. And what we do, we we have um, a training of trainers and the trained trainers uh, depending on available uh, availability of uh, funding and opportunities then they, they are able to work uh, with these different groups of people according to the agenda that is going on and according to um, availability of uh, resources. I think this is uh, e enough for introduction. Maybe later you can ask questions if uh, there is need to uh, give uh, more information. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Rahema. And last but most certainly not least, uh, Smita Ben, can you tell us a little bit about Sewa. Namaste, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Smita Patnagar, representing 2.9 million members from the Self-Employed Women's Association, Seva. So we are a member-based organization, um, organizing women from the informal, women workers from the informal economy. Currently, as I said, we are 2.9 million members across 18 states of the country, and our goals are full employment and self-reliance of our members. So as uh, we are registered as a mother organization, as a trade union, where we are playing the role of policy advocacy, bringing the demands and needs from the grassroots to the policy level, and whatever policy policies are formulated that are being translated into simple languages and ac made accessible at the grassroots level. But we are, uh, since our goals are full employment and self-reliance, and we always wanted that members do not just remain workers, but they become managers and owners of their own trades. So we uh, have organized them into collectives and formulated member-based economic entities. So we call ourselves as family of organizations. We have 140 plus cooperatives in our fold, all owned and managed by the members. We have uh, not-for-profit company. We have for-profit companies, the whole value chains, agro-based, non-agro-based, and wherein the members are the shareholders and they uh, run the, their own entities. So yeah, that's in brief. And if I speak very briefly that we have completed 51 years now and our membership profile is changing. And through the Engage project, we are trying to build, strengthen our young women leadership and also uh, trying to help our micro entrepreneurs, our women's collectives face the mainstream markets, bringing in a lot of digital insights into it. And trying to, as uh, one of my colleagues also shared, that we are trying to bring in the change management, the adaptation, changing as per the changing times. So we are working towards that. And our vision for the next 50 years has been to clean the skies. I'll talk about it later on when we discuss on this. So pleasure meeting everyone, wishing everyone a happy Women's Day. As such for us, it's every day is a Women's Day. Absolutely, Smita Ben. I couldn't agree more. Um, those are fabulous 
panelists for today. Um, as you can tell, we have an incredibly rich amount of experience and knowledge and passion. Um, and we're going to speak to, um, I'm going to ask you each individually a question that's specifically related to the engaged work you're doing and our theme today of investing in women. And of course, investing can mean very many things. Um, uh, Aster, I want to speak to you first. So you can set the stage for us a little bit. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting you last year during your 25th anniversary and uh, had the chance to meet some of the incredible women who have not only benefited from your programs and trainings and your savings and credit cooperatives, uh, but who have used these skills and opportunities to make very drastic changes in their livelihoods. And you talked about some of those. Um, you, you talked about how some of your members um, uh, now make more money than much of your staff, uh, which is a, a pretty neat uh, statistic to have uh, in your pocket. I love that. Um, so I want to get to kind of the core of your approach and talk a little bit about ABCD. And I know you have a great passion for ABCD. Um, ABCD we use uh, as a shorthand for asset-based community development. Aster, can you tell us how WISE uses ABCD uh, ABCD approaches and tools and how ABCD is helping women invest in themselves. Okay, I'm happy to be part of this uh, uh, discussion, especially to talk about ABCD. Thank you for uh, giving us the chance. Uh, in the first place, you know, uh, when WISE started, uh, its work just starts around 26 years before, even if this ABCD, the term is not uh, known at all, uh, what Y says is start with what you have. When the woman is organized into saving and credit cooperatives, and especially in the basic business skill training, they are always encouraging women to work on the skills, talents, and experiences uh, what, uh, they have in, uh, at hand. However, just at around uh, 2018, uh, our uh, wise governance went to CODI and uh, they brought this the ABCD tools and approach to wise. What we did was immediately after uh, uh, you, there is a trend that the CODI grads, when they come, uh, when they return back, there is an experience sharing for them. And immediately uh, we decided to took some of those tools and approach and incorporated into our training manual, especially uh, into the basic business skill uh, training, especially the half filled, uh, half empty uh, glass, the leaky bucket, uh, asset identification. Uh, women, uh, they are not empty from the beginning. They have some asset inherent. Uh, talents, skills, and experiences. We are encouraging them to use those skills, assets, and experiences and invest on those. So for a couple of uh, years, uh, after the tools and after these tools and approaches are incorporated, because basic business skill is a compulsory course, uh, there is a possibility, you know, to spread this ABCD concepts and strategies to all those who, do, who have been joined uh, the saving and credit cooperative. The whole thing might not be discussed, but the core elements of ABCD, the tools and the principles are incorporated. So for, for example, engage, uh, the total targets will be 2000. So all those who are joining the engage program will, are fam will be familiar with the basic tools and approach and principles. Uh, actually, uh, as of uh, 2020, uh, the WISE Strategic Plan 2020 to 24, uh, it uses uh, ABCD as an overarching approach and one of the key strategies. It adopted this as one of uh, key uh, strategies. And uh, more or less what we did was uh, throughout uh, in the outreach program, especially in order to expand our outreach program, we invite a lot of uh, training of trainer courses, including from the different administrative regions of Ethiopia. 
by uh, inviting those people to join the ABCD, we are uh, introducing the ABCD approach so that they can incorporate it in their work in, uh, in their uh, institution. And some of them, they directly use and adopt our training materials, which is rich with these ABCD principles and tools. By so doing, we are uh, expanding this one. Uh, uh, always there is a, an aha moment, especially, you know, uh, it was not uh, easy for a woman when you ask them, what is your talent and experiences? But when you dig in, the moment they are aware of uh, their assets, they say that, aha, I can invest on that. I can invest on this skill. Uh, I remember when I trained uh, the local administrators, one, one girl, she told me that she has the skill of, uh, uh, it's not embroidery alone, but a combination of uh, art, art and uh, embroidery. She has never, she used it only to, for holidays to give a gift for the, her family or something that, like that. But the moment they are aware and explored it, they say that, aha, this is an additional income for me. I can use uh, and I can invest uh, it. I can uh, get more income. So uh, by so doing that, it encourages women to have a multiple uh, business as well, using their assets, uh, using the different assets, they can uh, get a better uh, income. The other thing is, be uh, besides, you know, organizing a training of trainers course to the government uh, organizations and to our partners and uh, to our communities, what we uh, did was we designed uh, an ABCD pilot project which, and tried to uh, implement it cl uh, closer uh, to WISE in one of the uh, Weredas. What we did was uh, the entry point was the government, the government structure was used as an entry point to recruit members that can be involved in the ABCD training. You know, uh, at one hand, there is an ABCD training, asset identification, uh, and uh, strengths, identifying the strengths perspective. And also there is an action planning process. In order to uh, have this, you need to have a nominee. So the nominees are members of the youth, members of uh, youth association, women association, uh, traditional uh, leaders, so we use the local government structure to identify uh, the nominees and step by step, there is a training, part, uh, not a simple training, it is a participatory training where each and every individual is capable of reflecting and exercising. And also there is a group discussion there. So there is, a pos for example, let's say uh, I may ask the group, I may ask the group to identify through the appreciative inquiry to identify uh, one uh, community, one village in their area and uh, ask them to uh, identify what has been done in the absence of getting a support from anybody. Something that, that they have done uh, by their own will, using their own leaders, using their own assets and the skills. By this time, you know, a very tremendous stories are coming uh, in the community. And from this, we learned that even if, even if uh, this asset-based community-driven approach has been uh, eroded recently because of uh, you know, uh, the need-based approach of the government, as of the 1960s drought starting from that time onwards, the government is more of, uh, on this need-based approach. However, there is a potential in the community that they elect their own leader, they uh, identify their own assets and capable of, uh, 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 capable of you know, solving their own problems. When we conduct this, uh, before we conduct this training, there was a baseline uh, conducted in that community. You know what they said, uh, especially the role of the government. We consider government as a father and expect to fulfill our needs, but ABCD brought a different perspective. You know, when I was a child, I remember that 
the community has its own uh, means of solving its own challenges using the available resources, using selecting their own leaders. Recently, this has been a bit eroded. That's why they say that we consider the government as a father and expect everything to be fulfilled by the government. But this ABCD, it has brought a different perspective uh, to the trainees. And they say that, aha, if we, uh, there is a possibility for uh, the community to solve its own uh, challenges using its own uh, available resources. You know, the ABCD uh, pilot program, the first uh, objective is whether the, the training will help us it to identify all the available assets in the community, whether it, is, it helps them or not, so that uh, they can solve their own problems. And secondly, we can use this learning the learning from the project to uh, uh, further develop the ABCD process uh, in the community. Truly speaking, the community, they are capable of identifying all the physical assets, all the natural assets, and identify the human resources skills okay, from the pilot, from the engineer, up to the household uh, skills and talents. They are capable of identifying, uh, saying that, this guy has this role. This guy has uh, is capable of doing that. When we bring these two, uh, things together, we can uh, we can solve our challenges. There are so many uh, engineers. There are so many uh, uh, skilled people in that community. Some of them are in pension, but strong enough to support their community. They identify all human resources. The what wonders me is especially when it comes to the uh, physical. Uh, uh, physical uh, assets, you know, they were capable of un uh, identifying underutilized how buildings that has been locked for so long, patches of land here and there, even if when uh, trying to uh, ask to get a land for the group, they say no, but they are capable of identifying uh, pieces of land here and there, which are not utilized. So truly speaking, the APCD supports them to identify their resources. And they felt that uh, we shouldn't wait for the government to fulfill our needs. Uh, one of the important uh, uh, things which will be important, not only to WISE, also to our local government people who are also interested in investing on ABCD, exercising ABCDs. One thing is we need to build a team in our staff. Uh, we felt that uh, only one researcher, which is uh, unaware of much about ABCD, not dedicated to ABCD, and uh, project staff, uh, project team can work on this process. But it is time consuming, energy consuming. You need to stay uh, 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 with the community, report, build, so that uh, you can uh, get the right people to, invite, uh, to involve in this process. Team building is a very uh, good thing and giving enough time for the project, really, to invest uh, and work in the community is uh, one of the important lessons. The second one is, you know, if I am asked to go uh, and implement this ABCD uh, process in the urban context, we need to know also the legal grounds. For example, uh, we realized that it's not uh, the mandate of one project to uh, collect uh, assets from the community uh, in whatever way, and we can't invest, there is uh, some uh, legal issues there. This is one important, the legal ground has to be studied thoroughly for active implementation of uh, the action plan uh, developed by the people. And secondly, you know, it is very important and necessary, uh, high level sensitization about the ABCD process is necessary. It's not, you know, most of the rules and regulations are uh, done on the upper level and the local administration is uh, only insisted to implement those things. Unless at higher level, uh, there is uh, sensitization, awareness about ABCD, really we can't go. I remember some uh, more than 20 years before about this, uh, organic fertilizer, 
at, I was part of that uh, process and we were challenged to uh, implement or use compost, advocate for compost or organic fertilizer. However, because high level authorities are uh, made aware of uh, what compost is, what organic fertilizer is, then finally that organization became successful. So in our case also, we need to uh, work uh, on that uh, path. And appreciative interviewing is still very important tool. We can say that there are some elements of uh, uh, ABCD still implemented in the community. Still, there are strong and dedicated people who are, who are, even if they are not getting support from anybody morally and financially, but because they are, they have high energy, uh, they are still using the ABCD. Uh, one very important lesson, especially uh, after when, uh, because of these legal aspects, we, we can't, uh, we are unable to proceed further. After the action planning process, uh, digging into uh, the ABCD process becomes a challenge. Then what we did was, we are more or less try to advocate the ABCD approach and the tools within our own SACO leaders. We were able uh, to organize this uh, a condensed uh, three-day training to our SACO leaders, five leaders from uh, each SACO, and conducted more than 15 or 16 uh, sessions. You know, a very interesting thing come from their action plan is for the first time, a group enterprise appears in the action plan. You know, why is this very active and strongly working on individual enterprises? However, when we introduce the, uh, the ABCD approach with our SACO leaders and discuss and ask them uh, to develop their own action plan, what comes out is with uh, some of them are very eager to bring other uh, members from uh, who are not uh, part of that training and organize a group enterprise. And some of them who are uh, already in the meeting organize themselves to have a group enterprise like that of uh, establishing a quarry site or a child uh, care center or developing a recreation area uh, around river banks. These are some of the action plan uh, developed uh, when we introduce uh, ABCD to our SACO leaders. So there is a potential in the first place. WISE has to be strong enough. Uh, once they develop the, their action plans, there must be a team who can go and support them in, the, uh, uh, in their action planning, work day to day, work with them, action and reflection cycle. That means the process of action research with those people who have developed the action plan should be there because of limitation of the staff. I have a follow up discussion with some of them, but not done but, uh, much. But the important thing is, uh, even the issue of group enterprise after ABCD really uh, for me is a very interesting learning because uh, in WISE uh, we say that uh, working in groups, uh, group business, uh, it, it doesn't work uh, uh, in our SACO members, but they brought the agenda after the ABCD process, process and I'm proud of that. Maybe uh, one of our next action research for 2024-25 will be to follow up one of the action plan of uh, this uh, group. Thank yeah, you very that... much. This is what I have. <laughs> Thank you so much, Astra. And I, I, I can't help but to, I keep repeating in my head this example that you talked about of, um, you know, whether it's the government or any other type of decision makers kind of being like, the father or, or being viewed as the father, which is such a patriarchal, you know, um, viewpoint. And then listening to you talk about, you know, the women, just the transition of power, right, of, of moving to the, the women making their own decisions, um, whether it's about resources or, or what have you. And that's, it, it's a really powerful image um, to shift that power. Um, I'm going to go to Sewa next, which for those of you following along in our order wasn't next, but we do have uh, Mina Ben who has been having a little bit of trouble joining us um, with some connection issues and she's here and we want to have her while she's here. 
Um, so I'll ask the rest of you to stay patient. And Mina Ben, if you want to get your um, camera and microphone on, Smita Ben, you might have to translate for me and let her know that um, we're coming to her next. I'll get to our question while uh, Smita Ben, can you hear me? Oh yes, I, I see you there. Oh, okay, great. Um, so um, you met, uh, all of you who are on the call, you met uh, Smita Ben. You haven't met uh, Mina Ben because she was having trouble joining us, but we're going to speak to her in a moment. Um, they're both from uh, Sewa in India, so the same organization. Um, and Smita Ben is going to do some um, translation for us. Uh, so just be prepared to hear um, a couple of voices. Um, Asmita Ben, you mentioned that uh, Sewa being the largest trade union in the world with almost 3 million members, which is absolutely mind-blowing and amazing. Um, part of your structure is that members uh, elect their peers into the executive positions, and that ensures you know, that the executive reflects the membership. And out of 3 million members, almost 3 million members, 2.9, we're so close. Um, only 25, I believe, are in your executive. And one of those newest members is Mina Ben, who we're going to speak to. So I'd like to ask Mina Ben, uh, Smita Ben, if you'd be so kind to translate, to tell us about your journey with Sewa so far. How did you first connect and how did it lead to your role now? And I'll pass it over to you, ladies. Mina Ben, Sawal Samjai Gaon. Namaste to all. Uh, happy Women's Day to all. And good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Kokar Meena. And uh, I am uh, Seva joined in uh, 2018. Um, and my mother and my uh, and I Seva is a member. Namaste. I'm going to speak in Hindi. I'm going to speak a little bit. Namaste. My name is Meena. And I'm a member of the last 12 years of Seva. And I'm working in the last 5 years of Seva. And I'm a third generation of Seva. So Meena Ben has been associated with Seva for the past 12 years. And she's sharing that she's a third generation member, means her mother and her grandmother were also members in Seva. And she's been actively working with us uh, since the past five years, and we follow the integrated approach. And Meena Ben is coming from the Kutch district. And I don't want to say that I'm connected to Seva, but I want to say that Seva is my and I'm a Seva. So I don't say that I've been associated with Seva because I am Seva. I believe that I am Seva. And Seva is me. और सेवा के साथ मेरी जो यात्रा है पहले मैं सेवा की सदस्य बनी थी और इस सदस्य बनने के बाद मैं सेवा का आगेवान बहन बनी मेरे पीछे 1500 बहनों की मैं एक आगेवान बनी हूँ। So let me just share in very brief my journey. So I first became a member and then I was groomed as a leader and then I have leading 1500 members. और सेवा में आगेवान बनने से मुझे मुझ में तो बहुत सारा बदलाव आया है क्योंकि मैंने सेवा मैनेजर की स्कूल जो है वहां से बहुत सारी ट्रेनिंग ली है जैसे कि व्यक्तित्व विकास है डिजिटल ना, नाणक्य साक्षरता है और एग्रीकल्चर है और क्लाइमेट चेंज का वो सारी मैंने ट्रेनिंग ली है तो ये ट्रेनिंग जो है वो मुझे सेवा से मिली है ये जो सारी ट्रेनिंग है एज आगेवान में हमारे गाँव की जो सदस्य बहने हैं जो मैंने पंद्रह बोली उनको मैं देती हूँ so as a leader, I myself have undergone various trainings from Seva and Seva Managini School on strengthening my leadership skills, my digital skills, my personality, and also my uh, as a trainer. So what trainings? I think I have benefited from these trainings, and now I am imparting these trainings to the other sisters. As I mentioned, that I go back and train the other sisters in the villages, and I am actually directly delivering to 1,500 sisters. 
और मुझे ये बताने से बहुत खुशी मिल रही है कि मैं व्यक्तित्व विकास जो है वो ट्रेनिंग लेकर उसमें एज अ गोल्ड मास्टर बनी थी और मैं ऐसा मानती हूँ कि मैं गोल्ड मास्टर ट्रेनर हूँ पर मैं सेवा की भी गोल्ड मास्टर ट्रेनर हूँ अगर सेवा है तो तभी मैं गोल्ड मास्टर ट्रेनर बन पाई हूँ so i want to share that in one of our trainings i was assessed the personality development training there was a rigorous assessment conducted and i was as a gold master trainer i am very proud about it and i think it's only because i became seva member that i could become the gold master trainer to impart trainings to other sisters और डिजिटल नाणा की साक्षरता की ट्रेनिंग के बारे में बात करूं तो हमारी जो कच्छ डिस्ट्रिक्ट की जो बहनें हैं उनका तो अकाउंट भी नहीं था और अकाउंट चालू है तो उसका केवाईसी भी नहीं करा हुआ था और कुछ बहनें तो बैंक का जो प्रोसेस है वो भी उनको नहीं पता था तो ये सारी ट्रेनिंग जो है हमने उन बहनों को दी तो फिर वो जाके उनका अकाउंट का के खुद कर पाती है और वो जो पर्ची जो आती है पैसे निकालने की और जमा करने की वो खुद भर सकती है तो ये भी मुझे बहुत बताने से खुशी मिल रही है इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द रूरल एरियाज इन कच्छ डिस्ट्रिक्ट वुमेन स्टिल डू नॉट हैव एनी बैंक अकाउंट्स और इवन इफ दे हैव बैंक अकाउंट्स दे आर ऑल डोरमेंट सो आई माय सेल्फ अंडरटूक द डिजिटल फाइनेंशियल लिटरेसी ट्रेनिंग एंड आई लर्न द वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इट लाइक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाई इट वाज इंपॉर्टेंट टू ओपन अ बैंक अकाउंट फॉर अ वुमेन इन हर ओन नेम and secondly if i have a bank account how do i operate there are kyc norms there are certain documentations that we need to submit and which is a challenge for we sisters so i supported that and also now today the women have their bank accounts and they are also becoming digital literate they get the receipts they go to the bank and are becoming uh, financial literate Uh, मैं सेवा की आगेवान बनी तो मुझे ये जो आगेवान की जो यात्रा थी सभ्य सदस्य से आगेवान की जो यात्रा थी बहुत ही अच्छी लगी क्योंकि मैंने तो जो सीखा है अब, अब हम लोग क्या करते हैं कि सीख के सिर्फ अपने के पा, अपने पास ही रखते हैं लेकिन सेवा जो है वो सिखा कर किसी और को सिखाने की एक चांस देती है तो फिर ये जो आगेवान का जो रोल था मेरे लिए बहुत ही अच्छा था इसमें मुझे मैं तो सीखी मेरा जीवन तो सुधरा लेकिन और भी जो बहने हैं हमारे डिस्ट्रिक्ट की ट्रेनिंग और अभी मैं सिर्फ तेईस साल की हूँ और सेवा के साथ जो मेरी यात्रा रही है अभी मैं तेईस साल की हूँ लेकिन मेरी जो जर्नी है जैसे सदस्य से लेकर अभी मैं कारोबारी जैसे कि मैं सेवा की कारोबारी में आई हूँ तो अभी मैं पंद्रह सौ आगेवान पंद्रह सौ सदस्य की आगेवान तो थी और हूँ लेकिन मैं सेवा की कारोबारी भी बनी हूँ so and meena ben has just last week we had the elections and she has been uh, elected as seva's executive committee member so she is saying that earlier i was representing just 1500 uh, members under me but today i have the responsibility of the large membership base that we have and i am part of the executive committee and i am just 23 years old और uh, mujhe ye bhi khushi mil rahi hai ki seva ke sath jude to apna jo ye Uh, मेरे फैमिली मेंबर्स जो है मेरे मम्मा पापा और uh, हमारे जो परिवार के लोग हैं वो मुझ पर बहुत ही गर्व uh, महसूस कर रहे हैं कि मैं अगर सेवा के साथ ज्वाइन हुई हूँ तो इतना सारा जो हमारी बहनें हैं उनका अच्छा काम भी कर रही हूँ और मैं भी आगे बढ़ रही हूँ तो मेरा जो एक है कि uh, सब लोग ऐसे अच्छे से बुलाते हैं और कुछ भी होता है तो ऐसा बोलते है कि देखो इस, इतने तो इतना अच्छा काम किया है तो आप मुझे भी, भी बोलते है पहले हमारे ऐसा होता था कि कहीं बाहर नहीं जाने को मिलता था अभी मैं इतनी आगे बढ़ पाई हूँ तो मुझे देखकर और भी पेरेंट्स बोलते हैं कि आप भी अपनी बेटी को आगे निकालें और कुछ सीखने को उनको मिले सो मीना बेन इज अगेन शेयरिंग दैट इन माय विलेज फ्रॉम द कम्युनिटी दैट आई हैव कम फ्रॉम वी आर नॉट अलाउड टू मूव आउट ऑफ आवर हाउसेस और विलेज बट लुकिंग एट इट आई आई एम सॉर्ट ऑफ बिकम अ रोल मॉडल फॉर अदर यंग गर्ल्स दैट अदर पेरेंट्स माय पेरेंट्स माय कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स एवरीवन इज प्राउड ऑफ मी दे कम एंड सीक माय ओपिनियन एंड एवरीबॉडी गिव्स माय एग्जांपल इफ शी कैन गो लेट अदर डॉटर्स आल्सो गो एंड लर्न एंड प्रोग्रेस जस्ट लाइक आई हैव प्रोग्रेस्ड 
बस सेवा के साथ जी जो सफर मेरा रहा है बहुत ही अच्छा रहा है और मैं आशा करती हूँ कि मैं सेवा के साथ इतना आगे बढ़ू और मैं ही नहीं लेकिन मेरे साथ जो सारी हमारी सेवा की बहनें हैं जो श्रमजीवी है जो गरीब बहनें हैं उनका हम अच्छे से उनका काम धंधा सॉरी रोजगार का है या उनका शिक्षण का है आरोग्य का है वो मैं देखभाल कर सकूं और उनको कोई भी मदद की जरूरत हो तो सेवा करती है और मैं भी करना चाहती हूँ आगे भी so my uh, my dream is that i support all the 2.9 million members of seva in helping them strengthen their lives and livelihoods improve their health and progress make progress because we are all coming from the informal economy workers और अभी मैं एक बताना ये चाहती हूँ कि सेवा जो है पचास साल तो पूरा कर चुकी है लेकिन आगे के पचास साल जो है एज अ न्यू जनरेशन नई पीढ़ी की मैं बेटी हूँ सेवा की तो मैं ये बताना चाहती हूँ कि मैं भी सेवा को अगले पचास साल तक ले जाऊं तो ये तब भी तभी पॉसिबल है जब हम ये जो वातावरण बदलाव हो रहा है उसमें मेरा उसमें मैं योगदान दे सकू so we are uh, like the we have already completed 50 years and now we are looking forward to the next coming 50 years and as a young generation member i am also having lot of visions and dreams and also discussing with the other sisters like me we are all experiencing the impact of the climate change so how do we mitigate that how do we work towards mitigating the impact of climate change on our poor self employed women workers i would like to work on that और ये जो स्वच्छ आकाश का जो हमें एक बेड़ा उठाया है सेवा ने वो हम करके ही रहेंगे क्योंकि हमारी इला बहन ने कहा है कि हम सब एक है इस नारा सिर्फ हम मानव जात के लिए नहीं है लेकिन हम सब एक है वो सारे जो पृथ्वी पर जीव जंतु है और वृक्ष है उन सबके भी उस सबको भी लागू पड़ता है क्योंकि हम में भी श्वास है तो उसमें भी एक श्वास है तो हम उसको यूरिया ये सब डाल के या काट के रख देंगे तो वो भी मर जाएंगे तो ये जो पूरा हम सब एक का नारा है वो हम मानव जात नहीं लेकिन पृथ्वी के सारे जो धर्म नाथ जात है उसमें हम इन्वॉल्व करेंगे तो हम सब एक है ऐसा मैं बोलूंगी so that's why we are now we have picked up the clean sky campaign at seva and we what our founder believe that we all are always said that we all are one so it doesn't mean that just we women or we human beings it's the entire nature the trees the animals all of us are impacted by this whole chemical things that we are putting in or the climate change impact so how do we all jointly work to make the whole environment as a clean sky as we go towards the green livelihoods and green sky campaign green campaign Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mina Ben, for sharing your. Thank you for sharing your your leadership and your journey, and what an incredible example of what investing in women, young women, and girls, um, can do. You're a fabulous example of, um, you know, taking that all in and then giving it back and uh, and being a leader in your community, um. Mita Ben and Mina Ben, I'll let you decide who uh, this uh, is best for. But I, I do want to ask you about your new climate school. Um, your, uh, sorry, I'm off my script because we changed the order. There we go. Um, so you recently made a very exciting announcement, and you're launching climate schools as part of your engaged partnership, and with. Uh, for those who may have missed the announcement, with fifty thousand dollars, this project will support eight climate educators, forty climate and data entrepreneurs, and will raise climate change awareness in five thousand one hundred households in three districts within the state of Gujarat, India. Wow! Um, can one of you tell us a little bit about how did you identify the need for these schools, and how do you think your Uh, unique approach to these schools will help Sewa members uh, improve their livelihoods. Smita Ben, I'll let you decide if if that's a question for you or if you want to pass it to Mina Ben. So I'll pick it up from where Mina Ben left because she was talking about this and she said that this whole climate uh, campaign, green uh, clean sky campaign that we are running, and we are a huge membership base spread across the country, and India itself is a large country. So we and as as uh, I was also sharing that Seva Management School also has decentralized centers, so that we can reach out to the grassroots by um, ha having more cadre of trainers. 
So same way we are establishing the climate schools to have that the same message. How does it reach out to the masses at a low cost? And that's how that's why we are working on these climate schools. And we'll be creating not just climate trainers, but also climate entrepreneurs. So those products which can help save energy, how do it become affordable? How do we have that reach out to our members? And these entrepreneurs can then take those products and give them the financial linkages to buy those products, to maintain those products. So the technical trainings as well on the same. And the one at one hand, there's a whole awareness campaign going on. And on the other hand, the adaptation, the adoption of the technologies, which would help. And third and very important is we always feel that uh, we poor self-employed women are actually contributing to the green economy. We are not the ones who are spoiling the economy. So how do we bring in that recognition, the carbon credits that we need should be actually, they deserve it. How do we do that? So integrating these three things, we are now piloting this climate school and thanks to uh, Engage program, we have been able to pilot, as you rightly mentioned, in three districts. So in Gujarat, and um, it's going to help us establish the school. What modules, what tools, what pedagogies, what approaches, what kind of messages, how do we reach out? And then how do we strengthen the whole uh, school? Fabulous. Well, congratulations. We can't wait to uh, follow your journey along with these new um, climate schools. And uh, Nina, Ben, I know that you need to um, catch a bus. So please stay with us if, you would, if you're if you able to. If you're not able to, that's totally fine. Um, and there's lots of, you know, many congratulations in the chat um, for you. Thank you. Okay, we are going to move back uh, a little bit further west. And Sita Ben, you were just talking about um, uh, climate entrepreneurship, about entrepreneurship being part of your, uh, of that whole picture of, you know, climate resilience and adaptation. And so we're going to move, uh, stay connected in the entrepreneurship theme and talk a little bit about some social enterprise in Haiti. So Lucia, I'll put you on deck here. Um, Lucia, as part of Engage, you recently launched your second cohort, or you're preparing to launch your second cohort of a new fellowship program for women in social enterprise. Um, and you graduated a wonderful group of, um, I think about 25 people from the first cohort. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the program, how it's investing in Haitian women and what kind of impact uh, it's having? Absolutely, thank you so much, Jenny. So we've been hearing a lot about the the impact of holistic mentality change work with, with leaders, with women, with young women um, to expose and help them better recognize the skills and the capacity that they have internal to them in their own communities and to help them build networks and ecosystems around them that can help them succeed. Um, we are a leadership development foundation that was able to launch our first fellowship incubation program through the Engage program. So we had we had worked um, in a thousand communities from 2011 to 2020. We had trained 5,000 leaders, um, mostly youth, about 75% youth, about 60% women around the country. And we knew that the vision and the model that these leaders were promoting in their own communities was the end goal. Um, their, their changing and their overturning of the paradigms that keep young people, keep women, keep rural populations from accessing the opportunities, accessing the resources and succeeding in the way that they can we knew that this was work that um, the, the work that they were doing was the, the messenger um, that could help have a much, much larger impact. And so we deepened our work to the Engage program to say, how can we work with a smaller, deeper um, cohort so that their vision for change in the agricultural sector, in the food transformation sector, in the um, compost uh subsector in social services and educational services these young women these young leaders were 
looking in their communities and wanting to really change the paradigm. And so we worked with Engage to launch a cohort, an, an incubation program that would invest deeply in their ability to succeed, knowing that if they succeed, um, they will, of course, support their community, but they will be creating new models for uh, leadership in Haiti, not only because of, you know, the different ways that they are operating, the different ways that they are partnering, the 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 ability to um, be stronger leaders, be more vocal, advocate for the things that they need, but also in terms of succeeding. Also because they, we are seeing, and I'll get into some of the outcomes that we're seeing from the first cohort, but not only because it builds stronger citizenship and it builds stronger collective um, vision and it builds a stronger country, but also because it creates more revenue and it supports the growth of social enterprises that because of their ability to leverage the community, more collective stakeholders have the ability to raise more investment, have the ability to build stronger partnerships so that they can overcome the many obstacles that they have in their particular value chains. So not only are these mentality change programs essential to build stronger leaders, but they also work and they build sustainable um, change, sustainable progress, sustainable economic development. And so the Engage program helped us launch our first incubator in 2020 with 25 young women, 18 to 35, about 50% of them working in the agricultural sector, 30% in social and educational services, a lot of health, a lot of psychological um, and a lot of uh, business support services themselves, and the remainder uh, in this mattering of different sectors uh, with a priority on artisan uh, manufacturing and export. Since 2020, we have we have more than quadrupled and that enough. We are now incubating 200 entrepreneurs, mostly women, 65% uh, women. So I am very, very pleased to see that our exclusively women program now has some men in it. It is still a women's program, but there are men that are supporting, there are men that are part of this program so that we can build allyship. But in terms of the, in terms of the focus on women's equality, women's leadership, um, and women's empowerment, that has not been in any way diluted or adapted even with the integration of men. And the the launch of our second cohort, which is the first in which we have consolidated and included men in a much larger group, has shown us that that is the right track to be on because the ability of deepening the conversation um, with a mixed group, mostly women, but a mixed group of women and men has been absolutely uh, incredible. And so we just launched our second cohort, um, sorry, our consolidated cohort for 2024 with 100 new entrepreneurs. And we're working with 200 um, entrepreneurs around the country. We've been able to invest $200,000 in scaling their particular businesses. And we can tell you about a, a success story in a minute. Um, and we are seeing that the social enterprises that we're working with are increasing their revenue by 450% over the course of a year and a half of the program. We are seeing that they are growing jobs at 330% across the board. Um, and we're seeing a 300% increase in formalization and legalization of their enterprises, which we know is an enormous barrier to their ability to access capital, to access uh, partnerships, and to uh, to scale their business. The, the hypothesis of the project was that emerging women entrepreneurs and emerging youth entrepreneurs will disrupt and improve sectors which will build their countries and that the services they need in terms of the ecosystem and in terms of the financing which is where we're now going are not there um and that with a strong programmatic partner we can fill in all of those gaps we cannot be everything to the entire ecosystem, but in fact, the network itself can be a lot of what the network needs. And so building a strong network with the entrepreneurs that we're working and supporting with rigorous data and tracking of how their businesses are going has given us the ability to now be partnering with new, um, with, with new financing entities to promote flexible and trust-based. And thank you so much to our 
peers at Sewa and at WISE, we have so much more work to do to understand the scale of the different financing and um, blended um, investment uh, work that they have done. But we're now launching something similar in Haiti to say we know we know that this is we know these businesses can grow. They already are growing. We know these businesses are creating valuable jobs. We know these businesses are creating valuable services in sectors that need them. And we know that these businesses have young women at the helm of them who started this initiative to bring real change to their community and through their own sustainability and success, they're able to do so much more than an NGO can and definitely than international partners, which are incredibly helpful, but they're a support system. We need the, the, the success to be coming from the ground up and from these young women showing how they can really invest their own resources um, and mobilize for change. And so we are really excited to be launching new partnerships where we're going to be acts, we're going to be able to offer new innovative financing mo- um, mechanisms and products so that these businesses can succeed. And this is the middle that has historically not been addressed. You're looking at you know economic empowerment and it's either too small or too big for a young social entrepreneur that is really looking and saying, I'm looking at my community and I know that these services are necessary and that we can deliver them. And so one of the examples that I wanted to showcase is of Esther uh, um, Krizestam, who is a graduate of our first cohort. She is a dentist licensed and trained in Haiti. And she got together with a group of uh, young, recently graduated dentists to create a practice that would serve the vastly underserved in terms of dental hygiene population in Haiti by providing uh, mobile clinic services that provide an affordable rate um, and in uh, the locations that are that are uh, accessible to this population, services that are make or break for the daily success of an entrepreneur, of a business person, of a leader, of a, a citizen. You need dental. You need you know you need good health care. And so, knowing that this was absolutely out of reach, they these young, incredibly incredibly motivated and vibrant um, young women, for the most part, um, dentists have created. Uh, a service that is absolutely essential to the proper functioning of a country and of its citizenship, knowing that there were absolutely um, very weak services in that sector. So they've been able to grow their patient uh, pool by four, 400 percent, excuse me, since they started with our program. And they launched their mobile clinics in uh, a new northern department. A lot of this is also supported by networks that they are uh, connections and uh, relationships that they're building through the different programs. So building that critical mass of young entrepreneurs that are socially minded, that are looking to change sectors and to build sustainable paths for progress and for success, seeing other people working and risking and investing in the same way that you're looking to do is absolutely essential. It's that aha moment that we've that we've talked about here to um, keep people going to keep people going in the face of enormous challenges. And if anyone's been following the news recently, Haiti has been facing enormous challenges. We've been able to see the kind of growth revenue. We're talking about revenue, you know, dollars in the pockets of young women entrepreneurs and their communities beyond all the other uh, ways that we're measuring their empowerment and, and impact in the heart of a very, very difficult time. So these are strategies for keeping people motivated, keeping them engaged on building their country and building their communities, as well as um, to combat so many of the things that you do see um, in the news looking at in Haiti in a particular moment. So yes, we're very, very excited. And we cannot um, thank the partners here enough because of how we're the little sister of the Engage project. We're the youngest, I think, by Oh, you know, maybe 15 or 20 years. Um, and the ability to be exposed to these models that have, you know, 30, 40 years ahead of them and have done so many different things, learned so many lessons has been transformative. We are a different organization today than we were when we started the Engage Project. And we've been working with Cody for a long time. Um, and so it's always been an incredibly valuable partnership. But this particular project where the investment in getting our uh our different strategies and our different lessons learned from different contexts to uh, really be understood in a deep way has um, changed the game for us. So we're very excited. And thank you very much to everyone here. Wow, Lucia, thank you so much. And congratulations on the success of your program. Some of those numbers are absolutely staggering. 
Um, and I think you speak very eloquently toward what I have been able to witness only a small part of um, when I was in some of the meetings of Ethiopia about how the sharing amongst all of these partners together, you know, creates an additional component of, um, you know, investment and learning and collaboration. And that's fabulous. Thank you so much. Farida, I know some of our speakers have been so uh, patient. So thank you for your patience. Um, I, uh, CCDB does um, so much different work and, and I'm uh, most familiar with your work in and around climate. Um, and today though, I wanted to ask you about something new because Eric uh, tells me that you've recently undertaken gender responsive budgeting which for those who are listening, you may hear referred to as GRB, so gender responsive budgeting, as a priority. You're facilitating GRB trainings, advocating for responsive government budgets, and that you've achieved some really significant milestones in this area. So I'm wondering if you can tell us, how do you get local governments to invest in local women and their needs and priorities? Can you tell us a bit about some of the successes you've had and what's working for you at CCDB? Thank you. Thank you so much for this flow and this opportunity. So let me start from the very beginning. As I said, that um, we started to work end of the year of 2021 because of COVID and Corona we couldn't work. So when we came with the, along with other, uh, along with other activities of Engage, GRB is also one of them. So when we came with the term GRB and we tried to find out some uh, resource person, who can who can train us, educate us on GRB. So I found this is very new word and term in Bangladesh. So yeah. So what we do, I communicated with um, uh, TGNP from Tanzania because they are now master of GRB. So I get some help from Anna from TGNP regarding the GRB and in the meantime I found someone from uh, Bangladesh a resource person who is very much expert on GRB so we started um, we started to arrange a TOT on GRB because this is very new and where we going to work first of all we need to know first so there was a TOT uh, end of the year of 2021 and the next year in 2022 the whole year it took us to you know share our knowledge what is grb and why it is important why it is needed to be included in the national level budget so it took a year several meetings with local government community people our uh, women forum group members and our like minded organizations we call partners so it took a year it took a year several meetings and trainings and uh, workshop and uh, when we, uh, the community people, our group member, they decided uh, they address few um, few needs, few needs from the community, such as um, space for women in market or uh, uh, the inclusion of the women in the budget processing, the preparing the budget. Uh, we're supposed to start, you know, like have an open budget call before preparing the budget. So we started from the local level, uh, we call Union Parishad, which maybe you know as the Union Council Office. And also we work with a sub-district office, we call Upazila Office. So these two local government office, we work with them. So first, our women, when they visited the Union Parishad uh, office, first of all, women were not very much welcomed earlier before the engage came. Even they are not allowed to enter, you know, like if any women go over there for any kind of issue or problem, they said, why the women has come to the office? That kind of attitude, it was earlier. But I told, as I told, like 2022, the whole year, it took whole year to our people, the community, the local government, the everyone. So when the first time they went for the GRB advocating in the Union Parishad, they had to wait a long time outside of the office. There was no sitting arrangement. So they, they went for the GRB uh, advocacy, but they started with the advocacy. 
that should be um, uh, area for sitting, not for only women, but also for men. And then late second uh, advocacy was the inclusion of the GRB in the local budget. But before that, they want the they, uh, the member of the women, not only from our group, but also from the community should be invited, should be included before preparing the whole budget and submitting the budget to the national level. So, um, yeah, this is uh, like how they started. In 2022, end of the year, we got um, a permission like in a market, we are placed for only for the women. They preserve a place for women. And uh, though that place only used by women. And where any women, whatever they have, they want to sell it in the market, they can bring it and they can sell it. Whether you have like a bag or not, if you have a very small amount of vegetable or anything you want to sell, you can use that place for the women. No one will be else will be using that uh, place for the women. And when they started to go to the market, they realized there was no toilet. So that's the advocacy. The advocacy has been taken up in the next level. So they were not happy with the only place. The women started to advocate for the toilet, not only for the female toilet, but also for men and also for transgenders. Three toilet, minimum three toilet for three uh, categories. And I will happily share that our, um, our uh, local government representative, they have committed that in this budget in 2024, in June, they will be allocated some budget for minimum three toilets, one for men, one for women, another for transgender. So this is the first time and the inclusion of transgender toilet is also being there. And um, uh, I was talking about the open budget call. Earlier, women were not, not called for the open budget. So when um, we need to get the budget, previous budgets. So we get the previous budgets from the unit Parishad level. It was, um, uh, the local government were not like happy in the earlier years. They they think that why they these women need the budget, what they will do with this budget, that kind of, you know, notions is going on. But somehow with the facilitation of our community organizers, st engaged staff and the women, they both went, and they uh, they use the terms like right for information. So yeah, they have to give the, <laughs> the format, the budget, and they they bring it to the women group member and they discuss about the budget and the each item, each budget they have discussed and they have their own needs prioritized and they have also identified the needs. So such as I told like uh, marketplace for the women, like the toilet for the women, also for um the hospital uh, community clinic these are in a disaster place so uh, several issues from the community they have raised and they have bring it in front of the uh, local government people so um we we see um, we see positive change towards the attitude of the local government towards our not only women from forum group members but also community level any women if they want to go to a union parishad level sub-district level, uh, they are very much welcome. And um, and also the chairman, uh, the Union Parishad, I, I shared that there was no sitting arrangement and that Union Parishad has done the sitting arrangement. And uh, he also said that the, we don't have much space. We have very limited space and limited chairs. But if any women come, please let them to sit first because they have to face a lot of obstacles and challenges to come to my office. And sometimes I'm busy too. They have to wait. So um, the women should get the priority to sit. So it was his request. It was not like segregated way, like women will need to sit. It is like request. So the attitude and the community people are also like taking this very positively. And um, I was saying the... Uh, Earlier, I mentioned that uh, southern part of Bangladesh, we are working the Engage project, and this is very vulnerable. Let me know you like this is very vulnerable place. Why? Because um, because of climate change impact, obviously. And uh, earlier, in ten years before, there was only one cyclone or flood, but nowadays there are frequently cyclone and floods are happening. Minimum two to three cyclones and uh, floods are happening. So roads are like 
if you are constricting, they are like getting destroyed, not communicable. Um, so women has uh, identified that the roads are also needed for the women because um, in the meeting, they uh, they present like um, the elderly people and then women who are pregnant, if they are in emergency situation and they need to take transport from some one place to the community clinic or the hospital, the roads are not okay. So there is like life risk if you're taking uh, some patient or like uh, a pregnant woman through these roads, uh, this is not uh, safe. So we need uh, roads even. So few places we see like um, uh, budget has been allocated and also budget is going to be allocated for some uh, other places. So these are the women who advocacies. If I miss something, oh, the water. As I was saying, the southern part of Bangladesh and the climate change impact, there is like water problem. So women are like struggling for the water, pure water or drinking water. They have to fetch it from the far away and which is not safe. So um, uh, recently they have, they use the ABCD approach. They have identified their problem and they uh, the problem area, they have mapped it. What kind of resources is there? and how they're going to address those, uh, not only the problem, but also the resources, how they're going to use those resources and who can help them. So they have a plan and the map and they are going to submit it. And recently, very soon, we have our plan. And uh, I would like to share one more story and then I'm going to close up maybe. Um, the one story uh, recently, one of our community organizers, she, she was traveling to the field. And as I told that the road conditions are not good. So some places are not, um, you cannot use three wheelers or four wheelers. You have to be on two wheelers. That is motorbike. So she was using that motorbike and the driver, the driver was saying, um, sister, keep her from engage. And she said, yes, I'm from engage. <laughs> Oh, you are from Engage. So could you please tell our women group member, you're a woman group member, that this road need to be constructed. If they tell to the local government, the local government will listen to them. They are not listening to us. So uh, why I'm saying this one, it is not only the local government, also the community people are counting the women, their effort, they're recognizing, they're acknowledging that what the women are doing over there. So... Uh, I was so overwhelmed when I heard this story, and I was I was saying that see uh, if the engage has invested a lot to the women group member, not only the women uh, who are from engage because our women group sisters are also helping the other women who are in the community, were nearby or neighbor. If there are any you know um, the problem, and they have to go to the uh, local government offices, such as um, uh, Upajela office or Union Parishad office. They ask to the uh, sisters from Engage Group that, do you have any idea how I can do this one? And can you help me out? So um, we have like list down a lot of incidents and uh, uh, stories that women are helping other women. So this is Engage. If Engage were not investing that time, the love, their patience, their uh, their their, their um, kindness to the other women, uh, the community people will not count you. They are counting the women also. Like they can take lead, they can they can do uh, they can bring the changes or they can do the development in the community. And um, last, I can say that um, uh, the local government, the attitude, the the behavior towards the women has changed and they are it's not only like welcoming them but also if there is any big issues or event is going on in the local position they call the our uh, women group for a member that we are going to do our uh, like budget preparation we are preparing our budget you can come and we can talk or some other kind of like safety net programs they're calling uh, they are including our women group members too and uh, they're sharing the information where women can get help. So this is like um, uh, the attitude, uh, the help from the local government, our women groups are receiving. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Thank you so much, yeah. Farida. It's, it's 
is amazing to hear about such, you know, drastic changes in such short a short period of time. I know one year, two year, while you're doing it probably feels like a very long time, but in, in when we think about how long change can take, um, at least from my perspective, that's a very short amount of time to see um, some of these changes. And uh, so congratulations. Um, last, and of course, very, very, very much not least, uh, Rahema, hopefully you're still with us. I'm looking at my list. <laughs> There she is. Um, um, Rahema, yes. I want to ask I wanted to save you for last because I think this is a really great question to lead into um potential Q and A. We may or may not have uh, uh some time, but um TGNP has a really strong focus on movement building. And movement building requires many people to come together. It can be very long, it can be a very slow process. So I wanted to ask you at TGNP, how do you invest in people to successfully build women's movements that can advocate and create change effectively? What types of resources require to keep movements like this going forward? Yes, um, thank you. Um... TGNP uh, is managing to build um, a strong movement that is almost sweeping the whole country now at different levels. But um, I'm going to highlight some of the, the basic levels and where necessary cite examples. First of all, the membership. The members of TGNP um, are a perfect mix, I call it. Because some have academic background, they have been university lecturers, so they help us um, articulate uh, uh, concepts and uh, the higher levels of uh, knowledge. But we also have members that have uh, many years experience working in advocacy at the grassroots level. And we have uh, a members that have had high level engagement with the policy engagement with the, the policy formulation. And also some have uh, a strong bond and long term um, long time experience working uh, with development partners. So that mix makes uh, TGN for board very strong and also very rich in terms of uh, which way we should go uh, depending on the, the prevailing context. But also we make sure we have a strong committed secretariat who together with members can push the different agendas. But what is um, unique about uh, TGNP is that over the years, we have consolidated tools that help us in knowledge sharing. One such important tool is the gender language, you know, a set of gender concepts that um, whoever we work with, even if somebody doesn't know how to read and write, but somehow they have to be knowledgeable and get acquainted uh, with the, the gender language. And we are lucky in Tanzania that almost 97% Tanzanians can speak Swahili and about 80 something can read and write. So um, the language uh, aspect is uh, very, very helpful that we are able to communicate across the country despite the country having 120 uh, different tribes. That means 120 vernacular languages, but because Kiswahili 
is widely spoken, we are able to understand one another. So when it comes to the issue of grasping gender language, uh, with uh, seasoned facilitators, it's very easy for TGNP to work in any corner of Tanzania. So um, the facilitators, um, the majority of facilitators over here have been trained by members. Some members, uh, like me and others, still work. Um, and uh, when the secretary asked us to work, uh, we, we work and we are able to train some uh, other new um, advocates. And um, uh, in working, in, 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 in transferring uh, gender skills, we use a participatory learning uh, methods. Uh, we use very little uh, lecturing, but uh, most of the knowledge sharing is done uh, by using um, artwork. Um, in, defining the, the, in defining uh, the gender phrases, uh, we ask participants to draw, to compose songs. Uh, we, we ask them to poem. We ask trainees to express artistically about conditions in their communities. And it's, it's very, very powerful. If I cite an example, uh, two or three years back in one such training, uh, the question was um, um, express what is going on in your community with regard to um, child health, under five child health monitoring. So this one, they drew a picture of a baby uh, hung, hung on a, on, a, on a tree branch. You know, a weighing scale that is tied on a tree branch, and uh, the baby was uh, was weighed, and it was a very a very weird uh, drawing. And then we asked them, "What is this?" They said, "Well, um, this is the the under five services for monitoring weight of baby." And what had happened in that particular area, they didn't have a, 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 a dispensary. So um, mothers absconded taking children for um, under five care to far away uh, clinic because it took uh, a lot of time and um, uh, it, it cost a lot of money. So. Uh, after um, the government realized that uh, they were missing out on uh, monitoring of children in that geographical area, they decided to set up um, some kind of uh, makeshift um, um, under five uh, monitoring clinic. Uh, they asked the, the, the nurses to share uh, with the, the local government office. So sometimes the local government office would have um, a meeting. They want to use their space. So the nurses would, okay, come on thy tree and uh, let us hang the babies here. And so they express that way. So after the drawing was done, uh, that drawing was shown to uh, the district officers, and they were very, very sorry. Uh, that, that, that picture alone was able to change the mindset of the district officials to prioritize construction of a dispensary in that area. So this is what we mean by um, artistic expression of what is going on in our locality. We have accumulated many pictures of that kind, which 
uh, when uh, exhibited in a gallery form or uh, in any type of uh, exhibition to show to, to leaders that this is what is happening, there is immediate mindset change in terms of budget allocations for um, social development work. Um, that way, uh, we have accumulated a pool of facilitators. We would call them consultants or just resource persons, but these are seasoned people with the um, uh, participatory approaches that uh, we use in our work. Um, We, um, another tool that we also use that is quite moving at the uh, grassroots level, it um, uh, strengthens the movement, is the mock parliament. Uh, a mock parliament is set up at the world level. Um, the um, the councillor uh, becomes the, the uh, prime minister. And the, 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 the chairperson from the sub um become uh, the, uh, the ministers, uh, depending on the number of, uh, of uh, sub in the area, uh, the number of ministers will be determined by the number of sub -words. So there will be the Minister for Education, Minister for Water, and so on and so forth. So in this one incident, a year ago, uh, in one um, subword, the, the chairperson of that subword was the Minister for Education. And he could not, being uh, the mock uh, minister, he could not speak about uh, problems in his area. So he asked um, what we, we call the knowledge center. He asked the members of the knowledge center who are the TGNP uh, affiliates at the grassroots level. They are neutral. They don't belong to any political party. They are just in the community to look and take care of uh, voice out the, the gender inequalities and the, the social injustices that are going on there. So he passed a little note to the um, college center member, to the community animator, the one who are seasoned in artwork and uh, expressing uh, gender issues uh, through artistic uh, expression. He, uh, he asked them to please raise the issue of the bridge in, in area, in community X. Because for 16 years, we have had problems. The, the, budget, the government is not setting up a budget for that bridge. So the animators, the seasoned, uh, the seasoned uh, change makers, who have been trained by TGNP agreed to step in. And, you know, they, they raised up their hands and they, they did a small play how um, uh, dangerous that breeds the number of people that are losing their lives. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what the addressing the mock minister. Can you please uh, attend to this bridge? And it was um, uh, such a moving um, incident that it changed the whole scenario and it, got, it attracted the attention of district officials to reallocate a, a, a construction of a bridge that for 16 years did not uh, get any attention. But because of the intervention with the trained um, uh, people from TGNP, they were able to change the mindsets of uh, the district officials. Yeah, um, the other um, 
tool that we have evolved um, over here is the, the IMBC, uh, Intensive Movement Building Cycles. Uh, we are still innovating, but uh, it is proving to be a very useful tool in getting uh, the government structures work together with the community members. Uh, in order to start the intensive movement building type of uh, uh, activity, uh, we need to uh, get clearance from the government, from the prime minister's office, to the regional authorities, to the local government level, because the, the findings and the, um, the interactions that uh, uh, we would start in the in in the community have far reaching effects and the leaders need to be aware that uh, we are going to intervene in uh, uh, community x so it's very very important uh, for tgnp to maintain good relationships with the government so that whatever uh, we go and work with the government is able to own uh, the findings and they are able to work with us and the community members. Should there be um, anything that is likely to uh, uh, disrupt peace, uh, the government is there to, to back us up. Um, so um, IMBC is a very powerful tool. But within IMBC, we also uh, employ uh, what we know as the triple A. Uh, that means the people getting involved in assessing, using the gender language that they have acquired, assessing what uh, the situation is like, depending on the subject that we want to uh, members to uh, look at. They uh, get uh, to assess, and then they uh, get to analyze, and then uh, they get to um, plan for actions on what to do. So that is another tool that we make use of in TGNP. And also we have another tool uh, we call GDSS, Gender and Development Seminar Series which is like um, a public forum that we hold every Wednesday in the afternoon in Dar es Salaam uh, from three to five. And um, the community members are free to come and join. There would be a, a resource person maybe to, um, to offer a topic that uh, uh, we want to discuss. It could be um, maybe some headline hitting issues. And then uh, we get members to uh, discuss the gender perspective of uh, that issue. And then uh, through social media, uh, whatever uh, actions are planned get uh, um, reflected uh, into social media and sometimes mainstream media for many more Tanzanians to give their views and whatever uh, requires action, then people decide to take action or even uh, uh, make more comments and uh, move the motion if it is something that Tanzanians do not like. Yeah? Wow, and thank you, Rehima. Yeah. That's so fabulous. You have so many great tools and I love how you talk about, you know, participating in the movement being accessible through language and um, and also having really diverse membership from, you know, within your offices to the grassroots level. So thank you so much for sharing that. We are running short on time folks, so we won't have any uh, time for Q&A, although I've gone through most of what you've all submitted and 
for our panelists, I will save that and send that to you because most of it are, is um, some sharing of experiences, some appreciation for your um, time and, and sharing today, uh, which I would also like to, to thank you for. Um, your experiences are so rich that I feel like we could um, spend a week just learning from you. So thank you so much. I know it's getting very late in some of the places um, that you're joining us from. So I, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your day to spend with us, to learn with us, and to celebrate all these fabulous achievements. Um, of course, a very big thank you to Global Affairs Canada, uh, who uh, is the funding partner for this project, and of course, to each of the partner organizations, CPDB, Clay, WISE, SEWA, TGNP, thank you so much. Thank you to Eric and to Brian for helping to organize this and pull this off. And the biggest appreciation to you, Lucia, Farida, Smita Ben, Rima Ben, Aster, and Rahema for sharing so much of yourselves with us today. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities to continue to learn um, with you. And just wishing you all, including the little one who just joined us on the screen, a very, very happy International Women's Day, um, whether it's the beginning of the day or the end of your day. I hope you took some time today to um, think and reflect and celebrate and, um, you know, take in everything that this day means for you. So thank you so much. Um, we'll be saving your chat, saving your Q&A, so we'll make sure all of that gets passed on. If you feel like we missed anything, we'll see it in there, or you can send us a note through our website. Have a great day. Take care. Happy International Women's Day. Bye. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye. Bye.